Good morning, everyone. My name is Supes, and I lead data science and risk at Coinbase, which is one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world. So today, I'm going to be talking about what does it mean to build one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world, and how do you solve some of the hardest problems using AI at scale. So first, Coinbase is building an open financial system for the world. We are allowing users all over the world the ability to use, buy, or earn cryptocurrencies. Now, building this gateway to the cryptocurrency world from the fiat world of US dollars or euros requires getting several things right, including fraud, compliance, and identity. In this talk today, I'll be talking about what does it mean to leverage AI and machine learning to solve some of the hard problems around fraud, compliance, and identity. Just to give you a, a brief idea of the scale that we're dealing with over here. So first of all, our anti-fraud models are built using matrices which are as large as 10 million rows by 100,000 columns. And our fraud models are powered by signals from the blockchains. And the blockchains for the major cryptocurrencies we support, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, are on the order of hundreds of gigabytes, closely reaching a terabyte, and growing at the rate of 150 uh, megabytes an hour. Now, on the identity front, we have to, in order to comply with the law of the land in the various jurisdictions where we're operating, we have to obtain the identity document for our customers. And we cannot necessarily run AI and machine learning algorithms while that data is stored in clear text. So we encrypt all of that data in S3 buckets on Amazon, and then those Images are decrypted at the rate of 500 images per second, and then we run our computer vision algorithms on that. Now, first, I'll give you a brief overview of all these various interesting problems. First of all, at Coinbase, we have to solve one of the hardest payment fraud problems out there because of the nature of the goods we are selling. We're selling digital currency, which is instant and non-reversible, as in once it leaves the platform, we cannot recover it back. So this leads to very sophisticated adversaries. And fraud at Coinbase involves creating a synthetic identity. A fraudster will steal Alice's bank account, Bob's identity, which is driver license or social security number, and then Carl's mobile phone number and link it on Coinbase. Now, the scammer is going to purchase cryptocurrency out of Alice's bank account and withdraw it out of the platform. And then when Alice takes a look at her bank statement, she is going to file a dispute. And under some circumstances, Coinbase has to return the funds back to Alice, and the scammer in the meantime has run off with the funds, and thereby Coinbase is left holding the bag. Now we use machine learning as our linchpin in our fight against fraud. Our machine learning system is essentially doing mismatches across the different identity sources. You know, it looks at identity behind your bank account or identity behind your uh, driver license, or the identity that is registered with social security, or the identity behind your email address or phone number, and it tries to make sure that if a scammer steals Alice's bank account, the scammer has to also steal Alice's social security number, and also maybe Photoshop a driver license with her information, and maybe even register a phone number in her name. So up until you can actually make their return on investments so low that they actually just leave the platform. So that's where machine learning comes into play. Secondly, our machine learning system is constantly looking at signals which are velocity-driven, right? like device fingerprint, location, you know, blockchain-related signals, et cetera. A case in point being that at one time, we saw scammers were using a particular screen resolution, 1376 by 768, which is very uncommon. However, they were pretending to be coming from a particular device and using Windows Remote Desktop Protocol, which had a bug via which that screen resolution appeared to be off by a few pixels on each side. So that is why our machine learning model latched onto it and started giving everyone a high-risk score who was using that screen resolution. Now, shifting gears a little bit, in order for us to service our customers in all the jurisdictions, we have to collect identity information from our customers. However, identity verification online is flawed because you cannot necessarily shine ultraviolet light on an ID when you're asking users to upload it using the mobile camera and thereby, you cannot necessarily take a look at all the secret messages which are hidden in an ID, which are only seen in, under ultraviolet light. 
Likewise, you cannot ask a user to move or rotate their ID such that you could see the holographic images, which are also hidden there. Turns out, our scammers are highly sophisticated, so they have come up with very clever ways of Photoshopping IDs. Don't be alarmed, no PII there. Those are very clever Photoshops. What they've done is they've realized that since it is so hard to actually always Photoshop the, 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 the image, because you have to also create a hosted image on the ID. So they have resorted to just altering the text. So those are two different IDs with two different driver license numbers, but the same individual. So what we've done is using deep learning, we are extracting the faces from the ID uploads, and then we've built an ID or similarity algorithm which just looks at face similarity across multiple IDs. Now, I'll talk about what does it mean to be solving these problems at scale. So using Amazon SageMaker, we have been able to speed up our anti-fraud model building, which in the past used to take about 20 hours, and now using GPU instances and paralyzing our machine learning model building, we're able to bring it down by 10x. So we can build a new model in 20 minutes. Since fraud is highly dynamic and highly evolving, fraudsters are always adapting new techniques. So this is a key advantage to us, the ability to actually create a new model at, at much faster timescales. Similarly, we can now decrypt images which are stored in Amazon using Amazon's key management service. We can decrypt them, and then we can actually perform our computer vision algorithms on them. Now, at a company like Coinbase, we have a very hard problem as data scientists because it turns out our data scientists don't have access to data because Coinbase is storing billions of dollars of cryptocurrencies on behalf of its customers. And so we have very strict rules in place as to who can touch production data. So that means that we've had to build a very novel system via which our data scientists and machine learning engineers can actually write code. So what we've done is we've built a service via which any code that gets deployed, be it a JupyterHub notebook or be it a machine learning algorithm using uh, scikit-learn, it has to be code reviewed by one, two, many people, and then it gets deployed into production as a Docker container, and then it gets registered into Amazon's ECR, which is Container Registry, and then someone goes in and actually hits run and gets the model building started. And then the model config is stored back to S3, and then at the same time what we've done is we also deploy another Docker container into our own container registry, and then using a Flask app, we are able to also score a user using the same code. Now, when all of this is happening, image data, which is PII, and, and losing our PII data would lead to huge regulatory fines. So therefore, all image data, it stays encrypted on disk in S3 buckets, and they are only decrypted by these containers, which have the right credentials to decrypt them. And then you can run these algorithms. And that is where the speed at which you can decrypt images becomes very important. And we are able to hit, like, right now, 500 images per second. So this is our pipeline. We call it Nostradamus. And it orchestrates across Amazon's S3 buckets, Amazon's ECR, and Amazon's SageMaker as our environment for building our machine learning models. And to conclude, building an open financial system requires using AI at scale. And in this talk, I hope I have given you a window into what does it take to solve some of these really hard and challenging problems around fraud and identity verification using AI at scale. My name is Soups, once again. And you can follow me on Twitter, at Soups Ranjan. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to come and present here today. Thank you.